One of the commonly used probability distribution is the binomial distribution. It has the following characteristics. The experiment, the event, consists of a fixed number of trials. We call the trial N. Uh, in a sample of, let's say, 100 um, pieces of, let's say, ketchup, filled yon o baka unfilled or medyo short ng ilang ounces. So what are you going to do? In a certain sa assembly, yung dadaan yun sa'yo, halimbawa nasa control ng trabaho o uh, production and then nasa assembly ka ng production ng, ng ketchup. And then, titingnan mo at random, pipiliin mo ngayon yung or pipick up ka ng isang bot bottle of ketchup or is syempre 50-50 yun. It could be 50 50, uh, you have a 50 likelihood na, or 50% likelihood na unfilled siya, or 50%, kasi dalawa lang naman ang outcome eh, so 50-50. The probability of success noted by uh, pi stays the same for each trial, and the probability of failure is 1 minus pi. The trials are independent, Okay. So that's binomial. You have to be able to identify kung kailan mo gagamitin ang binomial in a given situation. So, ang outcome niya is dalawa lang. The probability of success stays the same for each trial and the probability of failure is 1 minus pi. Pag mayroon kang pupuluting isang botelya ng ketchup, for example, para i-measure mo siya kung siya ba ay tama, yung kanyang number, uh, yung ounces niya, Hindi ibabalik mo siya doon sa sa, sa pinagkuhanan mo. Ganun 'yon. Para sa susunod na kukuha ka ulit ng isang bottle of ketchup, yung probability na uh, na makuha mo ay filled or unfilled stays the same. The probability of this random variable to happen is equal to n factorial divided by x factorial n minus x factorial times the pi raised to x times the quantity of 1 minus pi raised to n minus x. Are you familiar with the operation on factorial? What is meant when you say, uh, what, how do you compute when you have 5 factorial? 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. That is what is 5 factorial. So, 0 factorial is equal to 1. As pi gets closer to 0, the binomial distribution becomes more right skewed. So papunta yung tail niya sa right. As the value of pi gets closer to 0, as pi gets closer to 1, the binomial distribution becomes more left skewed. But as pi equals or gets closer to 0.5 as it approaches this value, the binomial distribution becomes normally distributed or bell shape yung kanyang size na yung, yung shape pala yung shape ng ng at ng data mo yung binomial distribution so okay this is how it is illustrated as your pi gets closer to 0 as you can see it is right skewed as it gets closer to 0.5 in this case, medyo nagiging normal siya. Medyo nagiging bell-shaped na siya. Yeah. Another thing is that, okay, here are the examples that can be modeled by binomial distribution. Number of defectives in a sample of N items from a large population. Yeah. Counts of number of employees favoring a certain retirement policy but out of N employees interviewed. So, pwedeng ang sabot nila favor or not in favor. Number of Samsung mobile phones sold out this week out of the N that are manufactured. So, sold or not sold. The number of students who passed the term exam out of N students who enrolled in college algebra. Ayan. So, pass or fail. So, here's an example. The Department of Labor in the Philippines Reports reports that 20% of the workforce in mobile is unemployed. From a sample of 14 workers, calculate the following probabilities using the formula for the binomial distribution. 
In this case, our n is equal to 14. Our pi, in this case, is equal to 0.2. That 0.2 there came from 20%, okay? And our concern is that we, we are concerned of the probability that three are unemployed out of these 14 workers. So you're given this probability of success, not 20% DAO is unemployed. So what is the probability that three are unemployed? So you're going to compute this. Your N here is 14. So 14 factorial divided by three factorial because that is your X. And then multiplied with 14 minus three factorial. Then itong result na ito, multiply mo ngayon sa pi, the probability of success, raised to x times 1 minus 0.2, which is the probability of failure, raised to 14 minus 3. What if binigay ito, pero ang tanong pala, what uh, three are employed of, and ibig sabihin, yung opposite nito, because you're, what is given is 20% of the workforce in mobile is unemployed. But your concern is not the unemployed, but the employed. Kaya mag-change mag, mag, ito. Hindi na 0.2 ang gagamitin mo, kundi yung 0.8. Automatic naman na yung, yung 1 minus 0.2, you have 0.8. Kasi ang tinanong dito, employed. Pwede rin ganun class ang, ang problem. Parang tinitest ka lang kung alam mo ba talaga, naiintindihan mo ba talaga kung paano ia-apply yung, yung natutunan mo sa concept ng binomial. Dito kasi 20% unemployed, tapos ang tinanong unemployed. Kaya mag-fix ka talaga dito sa point 2 kasi yun yung probability of success mo eh. But what if ang tanong dito 3 are employed? Ano yung probability of success mo? Yung Unemployed. Kasi yun yung concern mo eh. Pero what if, uh, balik ta rin natin. So, ito, magkabalik ta din to. Lalabas dito, 0.8 raised to 3. Then 1 minus 0.2, uh, 1 minus 0.8. That's why itong nasa loob, magiging point, point 0.2 na lang. So, gan parang ganun lang, no? Kailangan, alam mo din kung paano gagamitin in case na hindi nga nagko-complement. So, in this case, nagko-complement, kaya uh, gagamitin natin yung values according to problem. Cumulative probability distributions. Halimbawa, your concern is three or more are unemployed. So, yun yung concern mo. Nasolve mo na kanina yung three. Three are unemployed. So you have 25% is the likelihood na three are unemployed. E what if three or more? So from three, pwedeng four, five are unemployed, six, up to 14, di ba? So i-co-compute mo isa-isa yun. Co-compute mo kung three, ang value kung four, ang value kung five, and so on. E ilan to? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. But tumigil siya sa 8, ma'am. But hindi itinuloy dun sa 14. As you can see, the value now is very, very small. Kaya pwede ka nang tumigil kung hindi naman siya relevant na. Parang nagiging insignificant na siya. Pag i-add mo, hindi nagbabago yung total kasi sobrang liit na niya. The probability is 55.1%. Yan, okay? And then, at least one of the workers is unemployed. So, greater than one. Ibig sabihin, at least one. Uh, from one and hanggang sa 14. Ano daw yung probability na at least one? Eh, bakit ko pa i-compute yung pagkahaba-haba? Kung pwede ko namang i-compute yung probability na zero ang unemployed. Tapos, ibabawas ko na lang yun sa 1. Diba? Mas madali. So, once makompute ko yung probability ng 0, so in this case, ito ay 0 factorial, 14 minus 0 factorial, so 0.2 raised to 0, which is 1. 
Ganun yun eh. Zero factorial is 1. So 1 minus 0 0.2 raised to 14. Therefore, makukuha natin yung value na equal to 0 0.044. Yan. At yan ay ibabawas natin sa 1. Kaya ang sagot, mataas na probability, which is 95.6% ang likelihood na at least one of the workers is unemployed. Oh, diba? At least one kasi. So pwede pang two, pwede pang three, pwede pang four. So from that set of outcome na one up to 14, kinuha mo halos yung, yung, yung 13 over 14 na likelihood. Na ah, yun. Then lastly, at most two of the workers are unemployed. So, compute mo ngayon. At most, ibig sabihin maximum yan, no? At most, hanggang two. So, compute mo yung zero. Compute mo yung probability na x equals one. Compute mo yung probability na x equals two. Tapos, get the sum. Kaya siya tinawag cumulative probability distributions. So, you have... 44.8%. Ang likelihood na from this problem, from 14 workers, ano ang likelihood na at most two are unemployed? The likelihood is 44.8%. That's for the binomial. And then if you're going to compute for the mean of the binomial distribution, it's just equal to n times pi. Variance is n times pi times 1 minus pi. Remember that pi is the probability of success and this is the probability of a failure. And the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. So in our example, um, your pi is 0.2, your n is 14, so n times pi is just 0.2 times 14, so you have a mean of 2.8. And the variance, how this first is the probability distribution is equal to 14 times 0.2 times 0.8, which is 2.24. And the standard deviation is equal to the square root of this variance. Now, let's define finite population. It is a population consisting of fixed number of known individuals. When you can count the population, it's called finite. Like, for example, yung number of students in this class, the number of cars in the parking lot, when you can count it. But if you cannot count it, then you have an infinite population. Like number of mosquitoes. Hindi mo naman maka-count yun. So that's for the binomial distribution class. 